It is always so good to be in Wisconsin. Uh, getting off the airplane today as I'm walking through the airport and seeing all the green and gold and the green and gold till I'm dead and cold, paraphernalia everywhere with the Packers. I, reminds me of my dad's man cave. He is the biggest cheese head. And his connection, his connection, I know it's kind of a stretch, but his connection is he played ball with, he was a teammate of Jerry Kramer's back in the day. Remember, you're number 64, was he? Back with the Packers sweep. Such a great, a great player. And granted, it was high school football where they were teammates. And get a load of this. Both guys are inducted in the high school Hall of Fame, but Jerry Kramer's still the best player to never be inducted. I have a unity pledge. I have a unity pledge that I want to propose for all the guys running. Why don't they all unify in that mission for Wisconsin to do whatever it takes to get Jerry Kramer finally inducted where he belongs in the NFL Hall of Fame? No matter their political leanings on the spectrum in the Republican Party, that's something they can all work towards. But you here, you all know, especially Packer fans, you guys know competition is so good. Competition elevates the best. And Wisconsin, you deserve the best. Because what, what you're getting from the federal government right now is not the best. And here in Wisconsin, your middle class has been harmed probably more than any other state in the union because of federal policies that just don't make sense and really have shrunk the middle class here more than anywhere else. I want to talk about three core issues that uh, need to be addressed, and I think Donald Trump is the one to tackle these issues and succeed in growing again and prospering your middle class. The three core issues that the political class in D.C. pursues with its own interests at the expense of our country really betraying all of us. These, though, are the same um, GOP folks who, they, they don't see the GOP so much as an expression of the people's will, but more as an ATM for their own wallets. And they're really shaken up right now. They kind of don't know what to do about the Trump train, about the momentum, the movement of outsiders, independents, GOP participants who are just really fed up with politics as usual. They don't know what to do about it. So they're shaken up and this awesome awakening, the shifting and sifting and the exposing of this rabid bite for them to hang on to any kind of relevancy and to hang on to their gravy train, it's leading now to a very healthy cleansing of the body politic. It's to heal the body politic and it's to save our nation. See, the Wall Street connected crony capitalists, well, they don't suffer, they profit with open borders and they don't suffer, they profit when jobs are shoved offshore. They don't suffer, but they profit when consultants and lobbyists push reckless foreign policies that cost us treasure, and more importantly, they cost us the blood of our finest, America's sons and daughters in uniform. The establishment's interest runs counter to the interest of the people, and it runs counter to common sense, which I swear, common sense is an endangered species in Washington. Consider these three policy issues. First, immigration. We've admitted more immigrants than any other country on earth, four times as many, 43 million now. More and more crossing the border, of course, every single day. Well, with Washington, though, mismanaging our money and the burdens put upon the private sector, stifling opportunity, this uncontrolled immigration has so destabilized the middle class and that massive crowding at the low end of the wage scale, it kicked away the ladder to income stability and it suffocated wages and it really surged the number of people who aren't working. And sure, the, the corporate shills who are funding today's kind of secretive pro-establishment 
mind-boggling $100 million worth of super PACs, they love the open borders and the wrong-headed visa programs and those that flood the market with more foreign workers. But really, it is a disaster for we the people. Donald Trump is the only one who really understands this reality. He's the only one who creates private sector jobs and balances budgets and builds things. He builds big things. And he has forced candidates to finally own up to their actual support of and participation in perpetuating the problem of the immigration issues that we're facing. And the other candidates didn't want to talk about it, but Trump made them. Now, because he beat the media on that issue, because, you know, they like to let their chosen one, kind of, or chosen ones, get away with not really answering questions about their betrayals. But knowing that Trump won on that issue, it should empower you to go ahead and ask the candidates, what the heck are you thinking, candidates? What are you thinking when you're going ahead and you're actually asking for more immigrants, even illegal immigrants, welcoming them in, even inducing and seducing them with gift baskets. Come on over the border and we'll, here's a gift basket of teddy bears and soccer balls. What are you thinking? It's just inviting more. Yeah, candidates, they can say anything that they want to about immigration, and amnesty, but actions scream so much louder than a politician's words. Take the Gang of Eight bill to increase foreign workers by 500% and green cards increased by 200%. Who offered the amendments for that to further collapse the U.S. incomes and jobs and security? Which candidate? Well, second messed up call policy I want to talk about is trade. The loss of our industry jobs represents one of the greatest betrayals of the working people in the history of modern civilization. And it's for shame, politicians. They know who they are who've been a part of this problem. We had the greatest manufacturing sector known to man. Well, it was dismantled and shipped overseas right under our noses because of political incompetence and corruption and nonsensical ideology. A third of our manufacturing jobs, a third of them, they disappeared following two major policies, NAFTA and then China entering the World Trade Organization. Our trade treaties, well, today they're not even enforced. They're kind of a joke around the globe. Trading partners like China, they're contractually banned from unfairly subsidizing products. They do it anyway, and they laugh all the way to the bank. Their cheating tactic is currency manipulation, and we can't compete when their central banks devalue their currencies. Trump is the only one hot on this because he's the only one who understands the art of the deal. Our partner's cheating is how our middle class disappears. The trade ideologues, they say, well, we can't respond to foreign cheating, so man, we're going to scare people. We're going to start talking about threats of trade wars. Wisconsin, these are the voices responsible for trade surrender. They say we can't enforce the rules because, well, then maybe that trinket made in China, maybe it's going to cost a penny more. Well, if a country or a company cheats us, they're pretending, what the heck? We're going to pretend it doesn't happen and we're going to lose jobs. What the heck? Eventually, ultimately, though, what happens then is we lose the American work ethic that built this most exceptional nation. Politicians create a people then dependent on government and grow government control over the people, and it is a very warped and dangerous road that politicians have put us on because where we're headed with trade well, it's going to ultimately fundamentally transform America into something that we don't recognize. And our kids and our grandkids, they'll never know then what it is to be rewarded for that entrepreneurial spirit that God creates within us in order to work 
and to produce and to strive and to thrive and to really be alive in the greatest country on earth. I thank God that Donald Trump gets it because he lives it. He succeeds because he knows the art of the deal and we root him on because he roots us on and he wants that same success for our kids and for our grandkids. Look, the ideology of trade surrender, it's not conservative, it's radical. Who's the biggest proponent of this? What, what candidate helped pass Obama's trade bill, TPP, and actually remove the hurdles for fast tracking, that's TPA, and actually purposefully has opened the door now for China and Russia to come on in and join TPP with zero congressional consult. Who opposed a crackdown on currency cheating? Who kind of freaks out now against putting any tariffs on Chinese trinkets and goods? You have to ask yourself, who is this? Well, it's not someone who understands Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan pushed trade enforcement harder than any president in our lifetime. Wisconsin, Reagan saved the hog. Here, you're Harley Davidson. It was Reagan who saved that. He saved it with a 45% tariff that he put on Japanese motorcycles to combat their cheating. He also saved the semiconductor industry with a 100% tariff. Shoot, let's learn from Reagan. Or what, some of the, in the establishment, maybe they're gonna start a new hashtag movement, a hashtag never Reagan. They don't like that. Well, every country knows now that there's no consequence for their cheating, so now they're finding more aggressive ways to really screw us and to kill American opportunity. Like our still towns, tragically, they've been hollowed out, and uh, the world, it's not that the world stopped using still, no, it's needed more than ever today. But the industry died here because DC, our politicians, they allowed foreign governments to target our businesses for extinction. They let it happen. Trump sees that we're the only country that doesn't defend its own economic interests, and he has said enough. We're bringing the jobs back home, he says. We're rebuilding America. He's going to put us to work. So remember, when a candidate says, well, look now, we don't want to do anything to increase an import, what he's really saying is he is A-OK -okay with cheating. And well, maybe it's really kind of awesome to him to let him rip us off, because maybe he's got his. Finally, our third issue, foreign policy and military might. Our freedom should be the GOP's number one priority. Only one candidate left standing, though, knows that military superiority to protect our interests and not just piecemeal together some reckless nation-building scheme overseas. It's, it's our military might protecting our interests that keeps us free. The threat of our time is that unwavering and horrid Islamic belief that we, peace-loving, generous Americans, that we are the infidels and that we must die. Well, only Trump talks rationally about listening to top brass as president and hiring the best of the best to work alongside our commander in chief, to work with those who share our interest in stopping the Islamic threat by defeating ISIS overseas with strong, strong military strikes and intelligent ops and spurring allies to get more engaged and at the same time to keep extremists from using our porous borders that are purposefully left open, using those borders and our visa system to let them come here where they will recruit to unleash terror here. And it's not something to laugh at, friends. Well. That's just more of that common sense stuff, though, that I guess in campaigns nowadays that only those independent of big donor demands get to exercise. Hey, there's a reason that big money and open borders and radical special interests are so madly anti-Trump. Think about it. His positions 
They're not radically anti-GOP platform positions at all. But they're radically anti-Trump, these folks are, and they're lining up behind the others because they know that nothing's going to change unless an outsider whom the people support gets in there. Same politicians continuing the same old policies that are trashing our economy and shipping out jobs and letting us foot the bill for everyone else, and palling around with the same old politicos and insiders who've betrayed us over and over and over again. Enough! You deserve better. It's funny, but not really. The same sanctimonious ones lecturing us about Mr. Trump's tone are personally responsible for policies that actually cost American lives and trillions of dollars. Well, enough is enough. Enough of the holier-than-thou lectures from those steering us into rocky shoals. So, an America first foreign policy and smart immigration where we vet who's actually coming ashore so as not to invite trouble like evil recruits setting up shop here. That is the essence of the long-term strategy to contain evil. That and respecting our red, white, and blue, making our military second to none, caring for our troops, loving our vets, paying them what is due, like their earned health care, physical and mental health care, and not pretending like tragedy doesn't rage in our military community today. Friends, 22 vets a day commit suicide. 22 of America's finest see no reason to keep on. Well, I don't hear a lot of other candidates, campaigns talking about our vets, but we are because we care. Their sacrifices will not be in vain. So we'll elect a commander in chief who shares that and we will never, never leave our men and women behind. And that's why we go to the mat for the front runner. And we won't retreat. We'll reload. We won't retreat, though. And we're willing to stand on the front lines, even, because whatever it takes to defeat the one who did leave our boys behind with no apology, but just a flippant, eh, Benghazi, what difference does it make? That, that embodiment of all that is so, so wrong with what we're really up against, Republicans. And what we're really up against, well, General George Patton, he said it best. He, leading the greatest generation, he said, politicians are the lowest form of life on earth. He said it, I didn't, okay, he said it. And he said, liberal Democrats are the lowest form of politicians. <laughs> so remember what it will take to save our nation. Remember what it's gonna take. It's, all of us working together at the end of the line here, by God's grace, we will be able to save the nation. And it's gonna take unity among patriots who love this country as much as we love our own families. So yes, engage in vigorous, healthy competition. Be civil, then vote. And I say vote for Donald J. Trump, and then unite to make America great again. And I thank you so much for your graciousness and allowing me to kind of crash your fish fry, let me come on in and speak my mind about the candidate whom I am supporting. I just thank you all so much for believing in the planks of the Republican platform. We know that we know that we know they are the planks that will build this great nation again. It will build us stronger, safer, it will save our sovereignty. So thank you so much for all of us united in that mission. God bless you, Wisconsin. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Sarah Palin.